Well, hi there. So I'm hi. recording some video. We're at uh, Lawrence <laughs> Baylor's house. You also go by Lari, right? Yeah. D did you know I'm a Lari also? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but I was reluctant to call you Lari because it sounds kind of too familiar or something. How do you feel about that? No, it doesn't make any difference. I've been called many things. Really? Uh, my family, my Baylor grandfather was known as Laurie. That's what my family has called me all my life. When I was in you, first... You pronounce it Laurie. How do Laurie. You Laurie, uh-huh. Yeah. And I pronounce my name Laurie. Yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, when I was in first grade, Mrs. Thurman, Mrs. Uh, Hugh Thurman, was my teacher. And uh, I was called Lori, but she taught me to spell it, spell it, write it out, Larry, L-A-R-R-Y. So I went by <laughs> Lori, but I spelled it Larry. <laughs> and a great, mix, a great mix up over the years. That's funny. So, uh, Has it been fun now and then, having a little distinctly different type of name? Oh, no, no, really. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> So what? So you have a, a drawing for me. What drawing is it? Well, it's just a, it's a a copy of the eighteen sixty nine map, coastal survey map of the valley. Oh. Actually, it, this one runs from Punta Gorda, which is down on the Rincon. Punta Gorda. Yeah. Uh huh. That's down there where the oil island is. Can you show it to me, son? Oh, uh, yeah, let's get this okay, on. Okay, let's go over there. Roll it out on the, the table in here, the best way. Hmm. This is sand point. That is the mouth of the slough. This was prepared by the coast, the coastal survey in 1869, and uh, <laughs> really there's Punta Gorda, there's and this is a contour. The Coastal Survey was set up to survey the coast of the United States. And they did the East Coast, and then they came out to the West Coast after uh, California became a state. And they did it, they prepared charts of the coastline. And then after they had finished that, the state at that time decided that they wanted the whole state surveyed, not only to prepare a, a actual survey, but to determine uh, if there were more minerals anywhere. More minerals? Minerals, yeah, yeah. it was after the gold rush. Did they find any? I don't know. Uh, I'm sure they must have turned up some. I heard one story about treasure somewhere along Rincon Creek, possibly. Have you, do you know of any treasure stories around here? No. no. <laughs> I think Joaquin Murrieta would have left it. Oh, he's left it all over California. <laughs> but anyway, this, uh, after the state of California decided they wanted to have a, the whole state surveyed, I've, I forget whether it was King or who was in charge of the, of the whole uh, survey. One of the, the his uh, underlings yeah. who has written a book about it was, a, was Brewer. And he, he wrote a book called Up and Down California, which if anyone is interested in uh, the early time in California would be well to read. And Brewer actually, in his book, Up and Down Cal California, talks about coming to Santa Barbara. And there had been rumors of coal over in the Santa Inez. 
when we went out <laughs> over to the Mono and up the Mono ways and there's an outcropping of uh, petroleum uh, tar light, uh, heavy stuff up there and people that didn't know anything about it thought it was uh, coal. And uh, he, went, he went all over the state. It, it's a fascinating Interesting book. Interesting. I advise you to read it sometime. Okay. I'll have to. <laughs> Can I get it out of the library? Oh, it, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's available. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the name of it again is? Up and Down California by Brewer. Thomas Brewer? By... Forget his first name. Okay. Hey, your uh, son asked me to ask you a few questions. Do you mind? No. Okay, let me get him out here. Could you uh, hold this a moment? Which, which son? Let's see. Fred? Uh, Fred, I believe. Yeah, I would, that, that would be Fred. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Fred, Fred said, uh, Mary Ann and I watched you, your interview with Dad last night, and I was impressed with how well you got him to talk. If you interview him again, you might ask him about selling pumpkins, brush fire, sea scouts, and the history of farming. Oh my, oh, that, that's a great <laughs> well, uh, well, Actually, let's d pick that up in a moment, okay? <laughs> so what's, what's this now? Show me what's what. This is a, a U.S. Coastal Survey map of the coast, Santa Barbara coast from Santa Sand Point to Punta Gorda, or Point Gorda, they call it. Survey, <laughs> surveyed by Greenwell and... Uh, In what year? 1869. And when did your father come here? <laughs> my father, <laughs> my, gran my great grandfather came here in 1868. Wow. Which uh, I want to point... The year before. Yeah. And uh, this is the old ranch. It ran from the ocean through to the creek. That's the and, and east which, boundary. Which, which creek is that? Carpentry Creek. Yeah. It, this is the east boundary. The west boundary goes from the the ocean through to the creek. This flat... And, and what creek is that? Yeah, it's still Carpentry Creek. Uh -huh. This is that flat rock where the... Uh, the uh, Seal Hall out is oh, huh. right there. I fished off that many, many, many times as a boy. And was the Seal Hall out then? Too? No. When did it start? No. Oh, maybe 15 years ago. 15 years ago? Yeah. The seal started coming? Yeah. Huh. There were always a, a few seals, and you would see them on these rocks here. Uh, you would see occasional ones, but I never, they never saw them hauled out on the sand like you see now. Uh -huh. This is a new phenomenon. Uh -huh. You see, the recent times are the first time in a great, a great many years when they weren't being killed by men. The Indians ate, killed them and ate them. And the fishermen used to kill them because they would get in their nets and get in their their lobster traps and uh, cause great, to, uh, they'd lose a lot of fish that way. And they would shoot them. And uh, so uh, recent times, uh, I think, what was the Marine Protection Act? Uh, I, I don't know the date, but it was, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. So they, you aren't supposed to molest them. But it, it's been a little bit difficult, not now because they couldn't do it, but time of the year you can't go down here on the beach and fish like we used to. My dad and I used to spend many, many hours on weekends fishing from the rocks down there. Hey, one thing I meant to ask you about is, were you in favor of the city incorporating when it did, or what were the pros and cons? Uh, there was, you asked me in the last interview about controversy, and that was one that was quite uh, loud. <laughs> I don't know what the, the right vocal. Uh, did he, yeah, uh, there was quite a lot of feeling against it, and some feeling for it. Uh, personally, I didn't uh, uh didn't really affect me none of our land would ended up in the city 
and uh, it, uh, uh, I didn't think there was a great deal to be gained by it, but I didn't, uh, didn't actively speak against it or didn't speak for it. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of my relatives did. Well, what were some <laughs> of the arguments both ways? Well, uh, it was just another layer of government. But the, one, the people in favor of it felt that the, this county government hadn't been responsive to the, to the wishes of the, the local people. And uh, they, uh, you know, they wanted to, wanted to run it themselves. Do you think it wasn't that responsive or somewhat responsive? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I personally felt at the time that uh, the people that were pushing it particularly weren't uh, experienced in running a go running government. Mm. And that I thought would, uh, would uh, be a kind of a problem, yeah. and I think it has. They had some real dingbats over the years. <laughs> really? Who, who do you mean to ask what some of the dingbats? Oh, I won't tell you. <laughs> okay. I'll have to do the research on my own. <laughs> Interesting enough, Ernie Wilbrand and his dad were uh, very strongly against incorporation. incorporation, but as soon as it was incorporated, Ernie wanted to be a a councilman, and he was for many, many years. And he, uh, uh, oh, I don't know. His father would have made a better one. <laughs> Maybe that's the way to put it. <laughs> but when you figure the, the city doesn't really do all that much, uh, we still have districts. We have the water district takes care of the water. We have the fire district that in, that's not city that it, uh, takes care of fire protection. The city essentially provided uh, police protection and uh, and planning. How about infrastructure, streets? And well, they they're responsible for that, but uh, uh, as far as uh, they do a very large department is the uh, parks and recreation. They're probably as active as anyone, well, with the exception of the police. But uh, the schools are, not, are a district. And it's interesting, when they formed the district, right. when they formed the district, at that time, the uh, financing of the special district uh, special district was about two thirds of the financing was from the outside the city area and about one third inside the now it has evolved so it's about half and half in other words the uh, uh, outside the the city the farmland and there are a lot of residents uh, who contribute half the cost of education, fire, water, and uh, 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 so I, from a practical standpoint, the problem with that they had in the beginning was a, a lack of uh, experience on the people who were running the city. But uh, I think the... Do, do you feel it's well run now? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'll reserve judgment. <laughs> I, I, I might need something from them. <laughs> you <laughs> might need something from the city. <laughs> you know, they seem well... No, uh, I, have well had, I have had difficulty with some of the city. You have had? Yeah, oh, because we joined the city. And uh, they, uh, <laughs> they... Your property's on the city? Uh, it, it adjoins it. It adjoins it. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you know, you have things like fences and, and uh, uh, trespassing and 
they don't want us to do some things and it's harder to farm if you're right up against people, whether, whether they're in the city or just live there. When they were the county, they were, were uh, just as vocal at times. But if they, the city uh, is more apt to listen to them than the county was at the time. You know, the farming, there are certain things that we do that, oh, people don't like dust and they don't like noise and they don't like us to spray and they don't like this and they don't like that. And they, uh, their weeds come over the fence and, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just people. And uh, anyway. The life of a farmer in the... Uh, well, it's difficult. It, yeah. It's... Uh, it's, it's, it's probably similar like this in other communities. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 So. Do you want to sit down and I could ask you a couple more questions? Yeah, I will. Okay. Did you see these areas and the... Different cross, different textures? Well, it's a marking. It's yeah. a code. It's uh, the legend, you know. The right, legend. right. What, and what is and the these are, are, I don't know whether they are crops. These are probably crops, which is in the, or it might be one might be for grassland. These are obviously oaks or trees, probably. These I know are oaks. These are, they're still remnants which of Which are the oaks of the darker parts? Yeah. yeah. These are oaks. Interesting thing. Uh, I was told by my father and others in the family that when they bought this, it was all covered with oaks. Well, <laughs> I beg to differ, unless this has been changed. Mm -hmm. It may have been amended, and I have been intending to go out to UCSB and go to their photograph and, and map, uh, what do they call it? They have a... Uh, an archive of some. Or? It's an archive, but I forget the name, uh -huh. what the, what they call. It. And <clears throat> I, we, I have seen other maps, and we did somewhere. I got a a small thing of of legends that were used, but they also sent an explanation that individuals and in, in, engravers would use a different. Uh, different ways to, to uh, de uh, outline the, the same thing. They didn't use a uniform system. And I would love to uh, know. It shows houses. I think this... What year again is this? Uh, 1869. Uh, I think this is the old house, which is still down here. I'm not which sure. Which one? That one there. Well, one's a one's a barn. This would probably the this would probably be the the barn. This is an orchard. It's obviously an orchard. Interesting enough, here's a here's a little orchard and a house, and uh, that is probably a squatter. Really? Yeah, there were squatters in on. Uh, the, uh, there was an old squatter that lived on the ranch when they bought it. And I believe his uh, his name they they referred to him as Dutch Henry. Uh -huh. I think he was a squatter. I'm not hundred percent. Did your parents permit him to squat? Well, uh, it was my parents. It was a <laughs> generation or two ahead of that. My grand grandparents. Uh, yes, because uh, some of the dad and his uh, his siblings told about his generation. They go over there and throw rocks on the roof and and arouse him <laughs> just to raise hell. <laughs> we we owned that property. We owned up at uh, Toro Creek. There was a squatter on it when Dad bought it. An old fellow, an old Irishman. Uh, Jerome Hayes, and a nice old fellow, and he worked. He would work until he er earned six hundred dollars, and then he would quit because he didn't want to pay income tax. 
<laughs> that was the cutoff point. And he had built a shack out of railroad ties and a lot of big timbers all, that would come ashore on the beach there. And which beach was this? At the mouth of Toro Canyon, and uh, at uh, uh, Loon Point, is there was a lot, sticks out quite a ways, and it used to catch an awful lot of uh, uh, floatsome and jetsome. <laughs> <laughs> Including bootleggers, stuff. <laughs> well, I told you about the bootleggers, didn't I? <laughs> uh, this recent, uh, in, in the last year or so, I found out that that C. D. Hubbard, who was uh, uh, one of the first, uh, he didn't have the first lemon packing house, but he had one. Uh, he bought the first one, and then he had one. Uh, uh, one of his own, and he was a commercial packer. He lived right there on uh, uh, Toro Canyon Creek. And his son, I found out, during Prohibition, would have barbecues for the local boozers. <laughs> the local boozers. <laughs> and he was getting, they were landing, the, he would get I don't know what, how much of the of the uh, liquor that they brought ashore there, he but that's how he got it, and he was. And how did he get it on shore? Well, the, I told you they would they would put the the bottles in gunny sacks. They bring them up on fast boat offshore, and then they'd come in and anchor just outside the breaker line a ways, and they would the bottles would be loaded in. <clears throat> packaged in uh, burlap bags, gunny sacks we call them, so you could handle them. They put those, download those into skiffs and they get a local fisherman to to row them through the breakers at night, which is, I uh, pointed out, was quite, is quite a trick, particularly if it, uh, there's any uh, swell running. You said there was an old Indian who lived at Loon Point and helped with this? Yeah. Oh, what, was he Chumash? No, he was a full-blooded yucky, and uh, his name was Cisneros. I don't don't know his first, never knew his first name. Uh, Hans Graham Rowley could tell you what his name was. And what did he do? Well, he worked for Fleischmann. And I, I still have a mental picture of him. He was very, very heavy, and he was. Uh, walked very slowly and he sort of waddled and at that time he'd walk across the highway. Of course the traffic wasn't anything like it now. He'd waddle in the in the morning he'd waddle over to to Fleischmann and I think they had him mostly catching gophers. He there at Loon Point? No, this is in Fleischmann. They oh, own oh, yeah. a, uh, that property north of of uh, the highway on both sides of the Lambert Road. Fleischmann had, oh gee, I don't know, 75, 80 acres in there, I think. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> they would, there was no road down, there was a road down near the, the creek, but there was no, there was just a path down the bluff, down to the sand, and so they would get those Cisnero, Mr. Cisneros and the rest of the family and they would <coughs> carry the bags of gunny sacks full of bottles up to the a top. Booze, right? Yeah, up to the top of the of the bluff, and load it onto a truck. And uh, the story is, and I think I'm sure it's true, uh, was that occasionally uh, a gunny sack full of bottles would be rolled down in under the, the lemonade berry bushes that were there, and he had a business of his own on the side. <laughs> and I know that's true because Andrew Granaroli told me about his uncle who was kind of in charge of the farming on the Fleischmann property. He used to go down to Cisneros to get his, his uh, whiskey bottle, <laughs> the bottles of whiskey <laughs> or wine. <laughs> no, I think they made their own wine. <laughs> Did you see the houses get washed away when, I guess, was it Firestone had the breakwater built, which changed the... No, that was uh, Max Fleischmann. Yeah. And it, he didn't... 
he helped them build it, but he was he didn't. <laughs> he, he, I don't think he was one of the heavy promoters. You know, he might have been. There's quite a quite a history been written about the war uh, about the harbor, and uh, that stopped the sand coming down the coast. Those beaches along the Padaro Lane, uh, this end of uh, east end of Padaro Lane. Those beaches. Oh, gee whiz! I'm sorry. Okay. Did I break you? Uh, let's see. No, we're still recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recording with my iPhone here. Oh. I have a little mic on, Larry no. Bailey. Anyway, uh, those beaches were a good 50 yards wide. Out to the. And now they are. Oh, gee whiz! The, the high tide that comes right up to the rocks that they put in there to protect the houses, and. <clears throat> The, uh, there, if you go along there, there are various places at low, very low tide, you can see the remains of old uh, foundations out that are... Uh, of houses? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, we go down there sometimes. I, I low do tide. go down there sometimes. Do you? I've never you, ever go, you ever go west of the mouth of the slough? Uh, yes. Well, you, Madara, yeah. you go to real low tide, and you know to walk up that way, and you know where the, they call it the, well, the Vaisham, the old Moorish castle. Yeah, they go. Casablanca. Yeah. Uh, that stretch, that was solid houses along their beach houses. And uh, then it got down to about, oh, two or three. And oh, just Isham's uh, pool house and some of his property got washed yeah, away. No, uh, part of it was is still there, but uh, the the main part of the beach of his beach cottage was washed away. The big part that we saw for years was the uh, he had an indoor swimming pool, and that's still there, right? Yeah, I think I've been so. In it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice. I think they've added to the front again, but were you aware of his Hollywood uh, Hollywoodizing down there at Santa Claus Lane when he lived there? Uh, I wasn't at the time, but I, since since then, I understood stood that he's quite wild. <laughs> like what type of things? Oh, uh, I think he drank a lot and partied a lot, and he uh, died at the age of thirty three or thirty four. What, who, it wasn't from clean living. <laughs> and what was his name again? Ralph Isham. And, uh, and he built, what's the name of the development? Is it Casa, was it Casablanca? Well, that's what they call it now. Maybe he called it that. I don't know. It's, uh, you weren't part of his crowd? No. You were too young, probably. Oh, yeah. He was uh, my parents' generation. Huh. Joan's parents knew him. But, uh, I guess they went to a party or two there. Oh, really? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I'll let her tell about it, see about whether that. she wants to tell you about it and have it broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> what was the deal with the pumpkin story? Oh, let's sit down. Okay. <laughs>